I've always been interested in the natural world and all it's surrounded by. However, it wasn't until I entered high school that I learned about the major role and importance soil has as a resource. And no wonder why, as soil is the base for all trophic levels. However, soon after I also learned how threatened this vital resource is, due to the fact that it takes up to 500 years for 5 centimeters of soil to be created together with human activity through global warming, overgrazing and extensive deforestation, affecting the environment and agriculture by reducing crop productivity due to soil degradation by erosion. I currently live in Pinoso, an area greatly dependent on agriculture to support its economy, and with marvelous natural areas with a varied amount of species. Both Pinoso's economy and biodiversity are in risk due to erosion. This is a result of an arid climate supported by low summer precipitations that destroys all soil vegetation cover, together with high precipitations in fall season. The combination of these two factors creates a positive feedback loop that leads to severe desertification. Therefore, I started thinking that in order to solve this issue, it is necessary to reduce runoff and increase infiltration, in order to create another positive feedback loop, leading to more vegetation cover. Local farmers were already using methods with the same idea in mind, to protect their crops, like terracing. After considering all the risks and methods I saw, I asked myself, to what extent does methods such as natural barriers of vegetation and organic matter help to increase vegetation cover and prevent the hydric erosion in the re region of Pinoso? For this, I planned an experiment in order to state which method is more effective. I created a series of models consisting of three types organic matter barriers, vegetation barriers, and controlled bare soil, all in the average slope of Pinoso. Then I will pour 300 millimeters of water in the top of the containers, as that is the mean amount of precipitation at Pinoso. Then with the top of, con of the beaker, the then with the top of the container open, I will measure the amount of water and soil by collecting the runoff in a beaker. By this, I will know which method reduced erosion more and increased infiltration more, in order to state my conclusions. After processing the data in graphs, I found several patterns. The following graph shows the mean eroded soil from the containers of each type during the five weeks the experiment was performed, executing one trial each week. It's clear the control variable due to that its bare soil suffers a lot of erosion. However, it decreases during time due to soil packing. Secondly, it was surprising to me at first observing how organic matter barriers protected soil better than plants in the first week. However, as weeks passed, the vegetation rose increased the root system and reduced dramatically the amount of erosion. The next graph shows the percentage of water that the soil of the container retained during the runoff of each trial, from the total 300 mm added. As it may seem obvious, without any change during the time, the control variable maintained stability in a low water retention, meaning high runoff. Same thing happens with organic matter barriers that didn't suffer much changes during the time, however still showed a good performance at retaining water. Last but not least, vegetation barriers did experience an increase in water retention during time, due to plants growth until reaching more than half of the added water, much more than the organic matter barriers. In conclusion, it is evident that vegetation cover is extremely necessary for the correct soil preservation in an area. However, in order to maximize efficiency, it should be combined with organic matter barriers, as the organic matter barriers will decompose, providing nutrients for vegetation.